a beautiful, lovely game for Game Boy. You know, we didn't have the best of runs last time. And, you know, Martinez is already in here. How are you doing, Martinez? It's nice to see you, man. You're always nice to see you. Um, let's see. Is everything set? I got my live split. I got... Yeah, no, looks like I'm good through and through. Let's do it, man. Let's play some video games. Be fast. Off shift and begin. Yo, you're doing good, Martinez. Yo, glad to hear it, man. Always glad to hear it. Yeah, I've been doing pretty good today, man. Like, um, I was a little busy with like family <laughs> that I wish I hadn't been uh, busy with, but you know, it's all good. Like, um, I was just helping them out with like various things. I had plans, but that's alright. And um, then after that, I was playing Overwatch. I don't know if you know that game or not. I finally beat that mode I've been trying to beat on Legendary, so I'm super happy about that. It was so hard, dude. So difficult. But yeah, no, nah, finally beat it. All done, man, all done. Pinyo and Vizzle with 201 bits. Yes, Pokemon Red. And yes, two more votes to Battle Kid. <laughs> Yo, well played. And Vizzo also second is yours. Yo, we're stealing that second place. We take those, men. We take those. Doesn't matter if it's only one bit, that is still second place. Yo, thanks for the bits, man. I re really appreciate it. And yo, not in here. Saying the last? Wait, what is- what are we saying the last for? Did I say that? I might have, I don't remember. I only move forward, I can't look into the past. I have to keep moving forward. Yo, Bulbasaur, get out of here. Yeah, Battle Kid, I have to add that. Do I still have that up? Um... And yeah, no, I can get to that easily enough. You know, multitasking's easy during the Bulbasaur fight. Like, I don't really have to do much. Oh, the last get good? Yeah. <laughs> no, man, nah. I got this. Free PB. Never need to be told to get good ever again. Wow, this is an awful Bulbasaur fight. <laughs> Like, I don't normally reset on Bulbasaur, but that was abysmal, so I'm gonna let that one go. Alright, Battle Kid was at four votes with those two additional ones that puts it up to six. Alright, options fast, off shift, and new game. So multitasking, <laughs> maybe a little bit hard. Yo, Valiant with the well, <laughs> get good, yo. Gotta get good, Valiant, every time. Yo, not insane mobile keyboard, remove spaces, it thinks are unnecessary, can't turn it off. Oh, that's what happened, yep. Yep, that makes sense, that makes sense. Like when you try to, uh, like you'll auto-complete a word, right? And that word has a space after it. But then if you put like a question mark or a period or something like that, it then deletes that space. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Yo, I know the struggle. But yo, I'm telling you guys, we don't need any get goods today. We are just going to be the good. Absolutely, definitely, guaranteed, no problem. All right, Gramps, give me the Squirtle. Only the highest quality Squirtle you have, please. 
I'll take that. So you want the water Pokemon Squirtle? E. You want to give it a nickname? Yeah, his name's I, man. I the Squirtle. Duh. Double duh. Oh, he's gonna take me on. What do I do? Alright, hopefully this Bulbasaur fight isn't as abysmal as the last one. Cause like, there's literally nothing I can do, right? Like, I just tail whip him, and then I start tackling. If he growls me turn one, I tail whip him turn two. Like, optimally, I would only tail whip him the one time. But yeah, here we go, third tail whip. Third tail whip, dude. Feels bad. Oh wow, and yeah, nah. <laughs> My Squirtle's not really dealing damage. Yeah, that's gonna take what? Five hits? Yeah, let's just reset that. Oh my goodness. These Bulbasaur fights, dude. Bulbasaur, please! What did I ever do to Bulbasaur? I'm trying to think, man. Is there any. Okay, okay. So, like, yeah, growing up, I may have made a few jokes. At his expense, right? A few jokes every now and then. It's like, oh, who would choose Bulbasaur? No one. You know, it's like literally everyone chooses Charmander or they choose Squirtle. Like that's where it's at. Those people that choose Bulbasaur, they don't exist. They're not real. And I can understand maybe saying that would have perhaps offended Bulbasaur. I'm just trying to be factual. I wasn't trying to insult him. Maybe, maybe he can forgive me. Not my fault, no one likes to choose Bulbasaur. Alright, clearly this is the one. Super easy peasy Bulbasaur fight. It's just, it's already a bad sign, like, if I have to tail up three times. The tail up three whole times. Like, come on. Be patient and you can have one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And grab your dumb Bulbasaur. I mean, lovely individual amazing Bulbasaur who's a swell guy that always gives me good fights. And Nurse says, Vinx, can you see this message? Yo, I got you, Inura, no worries. And Nottin says, um, it's not even autocomplete. You think out the thing, you add a space, you put any symbol that mobile thinks should come immediately afterward, it replaces the space. Autocorrect isn't even on, I hate it, it's so infuriating. Yeah, rip man, so it's not even autocomplete. That's a double rip, I feel for you. Which chat's been so buggy for you lately, Anura? Yeah, nah. Like, um, literally just yesterday, my last stream I was doing, like, there was a portion of time where I couldn't see anything anyone was saying. It was really weird. Like, I could see it popping up in my, like, uh, CLR browser or whatever. You know how, like, on the right side of my stream it shows chat? I would see the chat filling up with chat, just my own personal box that I used to read chat. It wasn't showing up there. So, everything was, like, mad delayed. Which OP? Yo, your Wi-Fi was buggy? Yo, internet is always just a handful, ain't it? Yo, we finally got a good Bulbasaur fight. Like, it wasn't even decent. Like, that was a good Bulbasaur fight. It wasn't the best Bulbasaur fight, like, stop the presses, Bulbasaur. But it was good. Um, I'm a little worried about this. Having an encounter this early on. Not a good sign. I mean, anything's possible. This could be the only Route 1 encounter I have. I just don't think that's ever happened. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had an encounter in like the first column of grass and then not had any encounters for the rest of it. And yo, Doomsday's in here with the Ohio. <laughs> Get good. Yeah, will do. See, I told you. I told you it was a bad sign. 
Like, we fought a Raditz in the first column of grass, so of course we would have another encounter the next few steps. But yeah, we had a good Bulbasaur fight, but, like, that could easily be invalidated. Yeah, I have two encounters just going up. Feels bad. Wait, if I have three encounters, that's fine. If I have four encounters, I'll run it, but that's, like, not that good. If I have five encounters, I'm just slow. There's no going, you know, there's no wiggle room there. There's no debate. Five encounters, you just accept that you are slow. You have six encounters, and then you start wondering why, you know, <laughs> luck just doesn't like you. You have seven encounters, and people just look at you funny, like, why haven't you reset already? What are you, what are you doing? Whoops. I did not mean to walk into that grass. That was a complete accident. I should have just walked all the way through at that point. When I accidentally walked into the grass, I should have just walked straight down. Just as effective. But yeah, that happens, man. Oh, wow, yeah, now that, that's four encounters going down. Nah. Nah, it's not meant to be. Not meant to be. <laughs> when you get six encounters, you start wondering why you didn't reset after the fifth encounter. Exactly. Exactly. You're like, why didn't I reset? I'm just wasting all of my own time. And you're Super VP saying, what up, thanks? You're nothing much, man. Just trying to play them video games. Uh, let's see, Nathan was saying, it's default hard-coded into the system and it makes me want to break my iPad over my knee. Oh, jeez, man. Yo, that's a bit intense. A bit intense. How much did that iPad cost? Like, for me, that's what I always think, right? Like, I love all of my things, because they cost money. Like, I couldn't imagine breaking any hardware, be it like a controller, a keyboard, a monitor, an actual, like, video game console. Can't do any of that stuff, man. No matter how frustrated I get. Not that I get very frustrated, but even if I did, it's like... Does this cost this many dollars? Is it worth breaking? And I'll always say no, I'm too cool-headed. Oh, I forgot to turn my phone off. Oops. Let me do that. I don't like my phone going off in the middle of my stream. So unprofessional. Yeah, just turn that off. Yeah, I'm doing good, Super. Just playing them video games. You know, seven encounters, you start questioning life. Exactly, Anura, man. You know, that happened to me, like, I think three weeks ago, I had seven encounters in Route 1. And I was just like, what is even happening? Is this really reality that I live in? <laughs> and yo, Larry, with subscribing with the Twitch Prime 10 months in a row. Oh my goodness, 10 months in a row. Saying subscribing sarcastically as always. Also, Vinx likes to crash birthday parties and eat all the birthday cake. All because he is so mean. Yo, man. No way. I wouldn't do that. Especially if it's chocolate cake. I, I don't do chocolate cake. Like, I mean, if I'm really hungry. Like, am I trapped on a deserted island and there's nothing to eat? Then yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe I'll eat the chocolate cake. I mean, it's not that bad. Like, it doesn't have to be a deserted island. You know, it's just, I'm not that big a fan of chocolate cake. This was also almost the fastest Bulbasaur fight I've ever had, but then I missed two tackles in a row. It's really interesting. Really interesting. Gosh darn it, man. I have the worst luck. Marnez says it's like burning hundreds of dollar bills, you don't know, for you it's it gets easier to acknowledge hate, which makes you much more controllable. And yo, know, maybe cheesecake? Yeah, cheesecake's good, man. Gotta get that cheesecake. Oh my goodness, man. Ugh. Not feeling this. Not feeling this one. It's like, I was right there, right there, like it was a good Bulbasaur fight. It was going to be the best Bulbasaur fight I've ever had. And then all it took was missing two tackles, losing the speed tie, and it's like, oh, okay, this is like barely a good Bulbasaur fight. Barely good. 
and it was about to be the best. Having such terrible luck, you sure do <laughs> seem to like rolling the dice. Yo, I love rolling dice. I really do. Like, there is this one game that I was introduced to through Two Week It In on PlayStation 1. And uh, what it is, is uh, you have the dealer and then the players, right? And the, um, the players will go first, and you throw these three dice into a ball. And, you know, they're just normal six-sided dice. Um, rolling pairs? Wait, was it pairs? Oh man, I'm trying to remember the rules of the game. Um, was it pairs you wanted, or did it have to be... Oh man, I can't remember. There's like certain numbers that are like really good and really bad. I know obviously if you get like all three, like 222, 333, 444, 555, 666, all of those are like, you know, you won. Um, 1, 2, and 3 is a super lose. Like, you lose more than you put down. Like, and I think it's like... What is it? Oh uh, yeah, I think 1, 2, 3, you lose like 2 or 3 times what you put down. And then um, 1, 1, 1 is actually super good, which is weird, because like, you would think that would be really bad. But yeah, 1, 1, 1, you win quad what you put down. Like, 5 times as much. And, uh, 4, 5, 6 is also really good. But yeah, normally, normally you just kind of roll nothing. <laughs> A lot of the rolls are going to be nothing. Yeah, the game's called Chinchi Rogan. I've never actually, like, played it for real money. I only played it... I've played it in, uh, Suikoden. I've played it with friends, like, with no real money on the line. Yeah, no, I do enjoy games of luck. I just don't ever actually gamble real money. Because I'd never win. I'd never win. I don't win in gambling. I just don't. I always lose. There, you want... Put your points and all, yeah, put all those new points you just got from your subscription in the wonderful 101 and move all your points to Rise of Lyric? Yeah, no worries. Yeah, nobody wants to play Rise of Lyric anyways, that game is stupid. <laughs> Not a fan of chocolate cake, unfollowed, you yeah, rip. Yeah, I lose more follows that way, man. Once they know you don't like the chocolate cake, it's all over. Super Sense Slayer comes into the stream to hear Vink say he's not feeling it. Yep, a typical Pokemon Red Run, alright. I mean, you're not wrong, man. Not wrong. It's like, ah, oh, jeez. It's just tough, right? Like, there's so much RNG in this game. So like, for the RNG to just be really, really trolly at the very beginning is just not a good omen. It's really not. I don't know if I hit that early enough. Ah, jeez. <laughs> nope, didn't get it. And I catch this Nidoran, though. It's a 33-34% chance to catch him. Just throwing the ball? Yeah, we got him. That's fine. That's fine, 721 is fine. Absolutely fine. Alright, here we go, man. Here we go. Clearly, we're just gonna have an amazing run now. Sure, we're like 18 behind on Nidoran, but like, that doesn't even mean anything. Yeah, some of best, or best, yeah, not some of best, best possible time is 151. That's a seven minute PB, dude. Seven minute PB. We just gotta do literally the best on every other split. You know, includes red bar and having no encounters in certain areas, getting turn four thrash in certain spots. I'm sure that'll all work out. Easy peasy. Yeah, I gave, uh, 
Last place Larry special permission. Yeah, I thought Tenth Doctor changed it already, but I guess not. We discussed that like forever ago. Get out of here, Weedle. Hmm, I probably should have healed before I went in- No, I definitely should have healed before I went into this fight. Ow. Ah, he up poisoned. Nice and early. Wouldn't want to- Oh, and the crit! Perfect! Absolutely perfect. Gotta guarantee you're having like the worst Weedle fight possible, man. And what a nut. Ridiculous. I mean, I don't know why I'm actually like surprised. Like, I just need to do enough runs, man. If I just do enough runs, I really do believe in my heart. And I'll just have the golden run, man. It's gonna be so good. I'll have no encounters in Route 1 except for the one that I need. It'll be a level 2 Radita. I'll beat him in two hits. Like, they'll both be crits. I'll beat Bulbasaur in five turns. We'll catch Nidoran. We won't mess up the Manip because we're good at the game instead of bad. Um, and yeah, the best Viridian Forest. The best everything, I tell ya. So let's switch these two Pokemon. The more runs I do, the more likely I am to get that golden run. Yo, that's the idea, man. I might be really, really unlucky, but probability will eventually be on my side. One day, I'll just have all the good luck, and it'll be amazing. Like, oh my goodness, thanks, when did you get so good at Pokemon? I'll play, haha. <laughs> That's the trick, my friend. I've always been good at Pokemon, but today, the stars align and I have all the good luck. One day. I don't know when that day will be, but it'll happen. It'll happen, man. Zero percent chance of this being the golden run? If by golden run you mean having all the good luck, then yes. Because, um, we've already had the, you know, like, the Bulbasaur fight, it was almost the best Bulbasaur fight I've ever had. Then I missed two tackles in a row. That's a 5%, 5% chance. That's ridiculous and dumb and stupid, but that's my, that's my luck, dude. It really is. I'm the kind of guy that misses two tackles in a row on the Bulbasaur fight. And then, yeah, we, uh, we only had, like, two encounters, I think, in Route 1. So, Route 1 was actually not too bad. That was actually pretty good, but then I messed up the YOLO ball manip, which isn't like RNG, that's all execution, I just messed it up. So that's not that bad, but I caught him on the second ball, so it's like whatever. Not bad at all. And then, uh, we didn't have any encounters in Viridian Forest, which isn't something to brag about, like that's average, but you know, it's nice to not have those encounters. But then yeah, we got Poison turn 1 going into the wheel fight, which was pretty lame. Alright, here we go. Yeah, 30 behind on Brock, oh boy. Yeah, now best time is 152. It's still a 6 minute PB. It's still a 6 minute PB, man, I'll take that. Possible. I just, you know, need to do the best on every other split. See what happens. Anything's possible. Alright, potions. Walk out of here. Battle style set. And we're good. Rather leave that for me to confirm. I mean, I've already confirmed it, but if you don't want to do it, it's whatever. I don't care. 
I'll do it later myself. Or I'll ask Tense Doctor to do it when he gets on. Alright, what up, Caterpie? Maybe I should do the Vex Threat and like Horn Attack, Horn Attack, Tackle instead of Leer, Horn Attack, uh, Horn Attack? I don't know. Doesn't feel right. Oh wow, are you serious? He would survive that. Is what it is. Yeah, my minuing there was a little slow. I didn't expect him to survive the Horn Attack. Like, he survived with barely any HP. That was just bad damage range, it happens. Probably got the minimum there. 85% damage. Oh, confirm that it didn't get votes by anyone else? Um, it did not. There you go. <laughs> Given how poor my memory is. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter either way, right? Like, it's my variety games list. I don't think anyone's gonna come in. <laughs> and you're a super VP with the one bit saying hi? Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, no, I don't think anybody's gonna come in and say otherwise. Yeah, what well, last player- last place Larry said right there. That'll do it. Ah, oh, really? Why did I not heal going into this fight? What am I doing? Oh my goodness. What am I doing? Oh my goodness. Yep, just get crit. Just get crit, that makes sense. That makes sense, yep. Awesome. Awesome. Aw, oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm gonna YOLO on this second horn attack here. Second horn attack. Do I die? Nope, one HP. <laughs> well, I'm going full YOLO here. Full YOLO. See what happens. Why did I not heal before the fight? That's so dumb. Alright, full yellow, don't get hit by rap, don't get hit by poison sting. Let's see what happens. <laughs> There's the rap. It's a rap, guys! <laughs> it's a rap. I mean, like, I'm always gonna go for it. If I'm in red bar going into Ekans, I'm gonna go for it. Because it's like, if I finish that fight with, like, that low HP red bar, that's red bar for the rest of Route 3, which is an extremely massive time save. But yeah, like, the odds of him killing me are pretty high. Like, I don't remember what, like, the accuracy of Poison Sting- Now, Poison Sting's 100%, I'm pretty sure. I think Rap's also 100%, but not positive. But either way, like, with that being the case, it's like a 33% chance, you know? Because, like, the Poison Sting, like, I can be hit by one Poison Sting and that's fine. And then that second attack has to not be Poison Sting or Rap. It's either one of those, then I was gonna die there. He had to use Leer. And he didn't, so I died. The run was pretty bad anyways. I mean, not- it wasn't really that bad. Cause like, here's the thing, right? Like, with Pokemon Red, it's all RNG, which, you know, any RPG speedrun's going to be for the most part. Like, yeah, there's a few outliers, but yeah, for the most part, RPGs are just RNG. There's randomness all over the place. You're going to have different numbers of encounters, you're going to have different damage values, enemies are going to use different types of attacks. There's so many different things that can affect the run. And so to be like 30 seconds or what was I, like 30, 40 seconds behind I think? After Brock? That's like whatever. It's really not that big a deal. Like, I could still have a massive PB with the worst Nidoran and the worst Brock. I mean, when I say worst, I mean slowest. The worst would be the, like, Bulbasaur beating me and Brock beating me. There's no coming back from that. That is a dead run. But if they're, like, really slow, I could still PB. There's a lot of time saved throughout the entire run. It's just, it's tough, though, when it's like, okay, I just have to do the best in every other split. 
You know, I don't I don't want to have to do that. It's a lot easier if I have like the best Bulbasaur and I have the best Route 3. Because, you know, I can reset over and over and over again for that. Like, that's really easy to reset for versus being like, well, I didn't have the best, uh, I don't know, didn't have the best Lieutenant Surge? Better reset. Yeah, that's both the, uh, and rival fight, and the SSN, then Lieutenant Surge himself, which Surge isn't bad. Like, it can go bad, but it's like, whatever. Really not that big a deal. Rep is like 85% or something? Oh, is it? That's news to me. That's fine, though. It, it's gonna happen. And yo, that's a really good Bulbasaur fight. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yo, to get a Bulbasaur fight like that... I mean, to be fair, like, I was really close to having a fight like that last time. It was just the darn Squirtle decided to miss two times in a row. Yeah, there we go, there we go. So that's really, really good. Really, really good start. <laughs> this is the run? Yo, it's too early. I'll never declare a run to be good until I've gotten past Lieutenant Surge. There's just way too much RNG in the game. Just way too much. I mean, this is already really good. We've walked all the way through Route 1 and haven't had any encounters. That's, that's pretty optimal. That's pretty nice, dude. Trying to send me a Jinx? Yo, no thanks. Never really cared for Jinx too much. He's Ice Psychic type? I don't know, she always looked weird to me. So I was like, meh. Meh! Like, I liked her in the cartoon, but she was never a Pokemon I wanted on my team. If she had been a Water type, maybe we could have talked. Interesting. So, still no encounters, and this is getting the Pokedex. Alright. I do need to have at least one encounter, but if I don't have the encounter here, I could have it in Route 2 instead. Right before Viridian Forest, I can go for that. If I don't have it in Route 2, I can still have it in um, Viridian Forest itself. I can fight a level 3 Weedle, which like... The odds aren't the best, because, like, I could just run into a Kakuna. Like, I could run into Metapod, but that's highly unlikely. I'm most likely to run into Weedle or Kakuna. That's fine. You know, Misty equals the best? Misty is the best, you're not wrong. But yeah, I'm complaining about- or I'm not even complaining, but I'm thinking about all of the encounters I could have if I don't have one in Route 1. But, like, honestly, I could have, like, seven encounters walking up. Here we go! Here we go! Like, this is never the good sign, man. The bad omen to fight a Rattata. Or, well, anything. In the first column of grass. Bad omen, I tell ya. I'm not a superstitious folk, but... It's, it's just probability. If I get it this early, the odds are pretty high. But I mean, maybe I'll only have two... <laughs> nope! Nope, it's done. It's done. I'm calling it now. At least four encounters in just this one trip through Route 1. At least four. At least four encounters. Well, there's three. Yo, that is... I have the worst luck, dude! Only I could go through Route 1 all the way, you know, to the Mart, all the way back down, have zero encounters, and then on the last section, the last time, have four encounters, which yes, I called it. I did call it. Oh my goodness, man. So dumb. So incredibly dumb. Like, oh yeah, I might have zero encounters here, guys. <laughs> but zero encounters, I meant four. Meant four. But I mean, even then, we had a good Bulbasaur fight, so it's whatever. It's just instead of, like, saving time, I'll probably, you know, be, like, right on the dot. It's just my luck, dude. <laughs> it's just my luck. Watch him walk left. Oh, no, he didn't walk left. Could have been worse. You know, Mr. At Unexpected saying Misty is super nice. I love all this, uh, all the girly girls. Yeah, that's fair, man. Yeah, I like all the, um, Ash's partners. I thought 
Like, all of them are pretty cool, in my opinion. I mean, I didn't like super watch the anime, as I got older though. I obviously watched a lot during like Indigo League and Orange Island, but I fell off during Johto. I watched a couple of episodes of uh, Hoenn, but I didn't stay invested. Yeah, I messed up the minip again. Maybe I'll still get it anyways! Nah, I could feel he wasn't gonna go in there. Yeah, I was just way too early pressing the buttons, man. Way too early. Ah, jeesh. <laughs> well, well, that went downhill real fast. Yeah, we were on pace to be like six seconds behind on Nidoran. Then I couldn't do the manette too hard. So I lost, what, 17 seconds? Feels bad, dude. It's a hard uh, manipulation, that yellow ball. Cause it's just, you have to be frame perfect for it. Like, I have to press A, A, A or B. I press both of them. Like, four frames before the cursor pops up when it says, A wild Ninoran has appeared. Yeah, right before that cursor arrow on the bottom right of the text box pops up, gotta press A or B there. I'll, like, slide my thumb from A to B. Usually after, like, the first lines been written in that dialog box. That usually does it for me, but I don't know, I'm just off, man. I'm just off. Yeah, this is this is pretty bad, dude. <laughs> yeah, things started off looking real nice. Like, oh, a really good Bulbasaur fight. And yo, yeah, Super BP, the four try-hard bits. You like Dragon Ball Z, if so, favorite character and why? Oh man, it's hard to choose a favorite character, man. My favorite character when I was younger was definitely like Goten and Trunks. You know, with the whole fusion thing. Obviously I was really young, so to see young characters also be, you know, able to like do all these cool things, I thought that was really cool. And how, you know, the adults like continuously underestimate them. And yet they can do all these amazing things. I was like, I can relate with this. But, um, let's see. Probably, overall, I would say my favorite would have to be Gohan. Though, I really, really love Gohan from, like, the Cell Saga. Like, to me, that's the height of Dragon Ball Z, was the Cell Saga. I love that so much. You know, you have all this Super Saiyan action going on, everybody's going Super Saiyan. They have all these different grades of Super Saiyan as they're, you know, trying to figure it out, master this transformation, and, you know, push their powers beyond their limitations. And then they unlock Super Saiyan 2, and the first person to do it is Team Gohan, man. And again, you know, he's young, I can relate with him, so that was very powerful to me. And just, Gohan's such a sweet kid, man. That was also a huge part of it. But yeah, I can just relate with the characters a lot. Both Gohan and Trunks. Which is funny, there's there's a lot of parallels. Regardless, man, so many parallels. Gohan, Goten, Future Trunks, Kid Trunks. I mean, obviously Trunks and Trunks are the same character, but still. Oh, I didn't switch my Pokemon, what am I doing? Height of Dragon Ball Z was Dragon Ball? Yeah, I don't know about that. First off, Dragon Ball isn't part of Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, nah, Dragon Ball's good. I like Dragon Ball, but I haven't watched all of it. I've seen maybe like 20 episodes of Dragon Ball, I think. And I do like it. I think it's pretty good. I really do need to like sit down and watch all of it at some point. But yeah, nah, I have watched all of Dragon Ball Z, watched all of Dragon Ball Super. I've seen some episodes of Dragon Ball GT, but far from all of it. Not so much. Oh yeah, and my favorite villain's definitely Cell, man. Cause like, you have so many characters where like... I mean, cause like, Raditz was different, right? Cause like, Goku literally like, sacrifices himself so that Piccolo can get that uh, special beam cannon in there. 
But then you have, like, Vegeta, where it's just, you know, let's wait for Goku to come back from the dead. There was a lot of that. And then, uh, who's the next guy? Frieza? Yeah, you know, with Frieza, it's like, okay, we gotta wait for Goku to arrive in the capsule. And, uh, also he needs to heal now that he's here, because he got bodied by Ginyu. So we gotta wait for, wait for Goku. Just wait for Goku, man. And then those androids pop up. And it's like, oh, hold on, guy. Let's let's wait for Goku again. But they're like, no, no, no. Vegeta's actually super strong right now. And it's like, oh, okay, okay. That's that's a little different. Let's go. But then, but then it's like, no, no, no. These aren't the real androids. These are the fake androids. There's more than two of them. And then, um, and then yeah, no. Nah, Goku has the heart attack or whatever. The heart virus, I think it was. He gets attacked by some sort of heart virus. He didn't take the pills that Trunks gave him. And so then he's out. It's like, okay, we gotta wait for Goku again. We can't, can't beat these androids. And then while that's developing, Cell shows up. And I loved, loved Cell. Because, like, when he starts off, like, Piccolo can beat him up, right? Like, Piccolo is, like, all down the body of him. And I think that's before he fuses with Kami. So it's not even, like, full power Piccolo, right? Yeah, you can already, like, participate in the fighting. Like, I like it when more characters can participate in the fighting of the enemy. That was really cool. But yeah, I just, I wasn't used to enemies being weaker than everybody else on the team. Like, usually the, they're always like, ha ha ha, my power level is a hundred times higher than your power level. You don't stand a chance. But not in Perfect Cell. That dude was so weak. He was so weak, he solar flares and runs away all the time. Like, he thought, thought about... Oh, that was, uh, Kami? Okay, okay. Well, either way, he was still comparatively weak. And, like, he wasn't trying to take on all the Z-Fighters. He thought about his engagements. He thought about, you know, what, how he was going to do this. So I love that about Imperfect Cell. Then you have semi-perfect cell, and like there's that whole scene with like Tien, and yeah, Tien wasn't exactly defeating semi-perfect cell, but still, like it was a really good moment. And then you know you have perfect cell, like I I'm sorry, it's it's just the best. You know, your favorite is your boy Broly? Yeah, Broly's cool, man. Broly's definitely cool for sure. And, uh, Dragon Ball is, like, completely something else, man. <laughs> oh, the Brock split? I thought I hit the Brock split. It's right there. I don't understand. Oh, oh, you were saying it was good and then it was bad. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. You know, not having red bar for the fight is tough. Because, like, there's just so many, like, level up jingles and learning attack jingles. So it takes a while, man. But yeah, overall, I just like Dragon Ball, period. I really do. I like Dragon Ball, I like Dragon Ball Z, I like Dragon Ball Super. I've enjoyed the few episodes of GT that I've watched. I'm told it's really, really bad, but I watched it when I was a kid, I don't really remember. So I don't really know about all that. I liked what I saw. You know, Super Sense Slayer says Gohan is one of my favorites too. Gohan and Videl are also well suited for each other. Yo, I agree. It's so weird though, her characterization once it's in Dragon Ball Super. I mean, I get it. It's like the same thing that happened to Chi Chi. Like, once you have that, like, tomboyish character and they become a wife in Dragon Ball, you're, like, doomed to, like, forever be in the background. And, like, just become super stereotypically feminine, I guess? Like, I guess it's, like, the idea of being a wife. You just have to fit that idea. So it was a shame that Videl went through that. Because she, she was full of so much character before she got married. But after she got married, it was all over, man. All over. But yeah, that didn't happen to Bulma, though. Bulma's definitely the exception. But, you know, she's been there since Dragon Ball. She gets that special treatment. Yeah, that might be what it is. Maybe they're just trying really hard to make the characters not seem the same. Even though I feel like Videl and Chi Chi are extremely similar up to that point. I mean, obviously Videl's not as, like, 
tough on, like, Gohan as, uh, Chi-Chi is to Goku. He is different, but, I don't know, she's also kind of the same IMO. Alright, Kakuna. Getting boxed by this horn attack, you understand? Yo, Inertia GT is great? Yo, nice. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't done too much of the GT, I don't remember, man. I watched it when I was a little kid. Like, I was watching GT before I ever saw the Cell arc, so, like, everything was way out of balance. Like, I was seeing, like, full-grown, like, Goten before I knew who Goten was. And, uh, yo, nobody's in here, man. Yo, nobody... Man, we were so close. So close to beating Overwatch on Legendary together last night. That was the best, man. So close. Next time. Next time. For sure. You know, Super Sin Slayer saying Bulma gets special treatment for being an old school character, being the brains of the group, and for having Vegeta for a husband. I mean, yeah, they do need to have, like, that smart character, because, like, there's certain periods of time where, you know, they're trying to explain all these things, and it's like, it just doesn't make sense for Goku or Vegeta to be the mouthpieces for that. I mean, Piccolo can sometimes, Gohan can do it, but sometimes it's still, like, too scientific, and it's like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Get Bulma. Yo, Go Gohan let you, uh, down? Feels bad, man? Yeah. It's a shame, dude. Ah, Gohan, man. Back in the day. Cause like, it makes sense, right? Like, it makes sense why a lot of people are unsatisfied with Gohan's art. Cause like, they were building him up during the Cell arc. He was going to become the new main character. Like, Goku was passing the torch. Literally, you could see it in the anime. He's passing the torch to Gohan new main character and like everybody is so hype i mean we might not have been literally thinking those thoughts but it was all you know it was all there lots of uh cues man we were all forming our ideas on where dragon ball z was going even as kids we knew gohan was about to be some serious serious stuff but nope <laughs> not quite instead they decided to keep goku you know main protagonist and Gohan just kind of fell from fell to the side they didn't know what to do with the character anymore not that I dislike where his character went in super like I think his character is fine I still really like Gohan especially like seeing him with Videl and Pawn is like it's really adorable it's really cute and like seeing his personal struggle after um Frieza like oh my goodness it's pretty good, like, really good characterization there. I still wish he would have had, like, some good moments, though. I feel like he could have had some better moments. And, you know, nobody says I was also able to be Uprising today on Expert first try. <laughs> Yo, nice! You discovered a secret crit hitbox. Yo, let's go. I didn't know that was a thing. Yo, Kid Icarus Uprising? <laughs> no, no, no. Overwatch. Overwatch Uprising. You do realize they abandoned the whole Gohan thing because fans wanted Goku, right? Well, yeah, like, I'm not blaming them for doing that. Like, you know, it's tough. You know, it's really tough. You're going to have people that want one thing, people that want another. You can't please everyone. Like, some people, like, they saw where the story was going and they're like, yep. Give me super powerful Gohan, Super Saiyan 3 Gohan, let's go. Or I guess he has this ultimate form. Still, there's places this can go. Show me more Gohan. Gohan beats Majin Buu. Let's go. And then you had other people that was like, Goku's dead again? <laughs> no, give me my Goku. You can't please everybody. Personally, I would have preferred to see, you know, Gohan take over, but it's good either way, I, I don't care. Whatever they decide to do, man. Cause like, I like the Majin Buu arc. It's not my favorite, but it's still good, like... Heck, it introduces Gotenks, and I love Gotenks. Goten and Trunks are the best, man.
You know, the higher up saw the result and had Toriyama stick with Goku? Yeah, it happens. It happens, man. Like, I get it, you know? Nobody wants to, like, try new things. It's just, that's how it is in the entertainment industry, right? Because you have, like, Naruto, for example. Like, you know, they were pushing that forever. Forever. It was supposed to, you know, it was supposed to come to an end. They're like, nah, nah, nah. Here's this villain, here's that villain. Naruto just keeps going. Because it makes money! So it's like, why change up the formula? And then they actually did, and they did make Naruto's kid or whatever. Personally, I never cared about that, so, like, and a lot of people don't. Like, uh, Bolto, or just Bolts, whatever, man. Not a lot of people are into that, so it makes sense. But you know, there's a huge difference, right? It was like, with Naruto moving on to his kid, his kid wasn't part of the manga. Like, Naruto ended, like, he's just a teenager, and then, you know, it just fast-forwards, he's a adult, he has a kid, and it's like, who's this guy? That's not Naruto. Versus Dragon Ball Z, Gohan was there day one. The very, like, beginning of Dragon Ball Z, there's Gohan. Without them, without Gohan, they wouldn't have beat Raditz. Like, that would not have happened. It would not have transpired like that. He was part of the equation. You know, he's there for the fight against Frieza. They gathered up the Dragon Balls. You know, he and Krillin were the ones to first work alongside Vegeta. Like, Gohan was there, man. So, like, you have this huge attachment to the character. But, again, I get it, you know, it, it's tough to switch characters. It really is. Didn't have to make Go- uh, make Gohan such a square? Yeah, yeah, I, I get you. Like, I don't mind him being, like, super into, like, books and being a professor, college student, all that. I, I don't mind that. He can do all the nerdy stuff in the world. That's fine. Like, I think it makes sense for his character, but I wish he was still, you know, good at fighting. Because, <laughs> like, he really drops the ball, man. Like, he has the potential to be better than everybody else. Like, he should be... Like, he doesn't even go... Ugh, I don't want to go into spoilers for Super, but, like, so much potential! It's never shown! Nope. Whoops, that's one tile too far, Vinks. Yeah, that potential is just not there, man. Feels bad, dude. Yeah, nah, I can't do 3DS games. I can't stream those. Oh, Gohan, who's to say what Raditz would have done to Roshi's Island? I know, right? Poor Roshi. Needs that island. Gohan headbutt OP? Exactly, man. Headbutt too strong. Yo, you're trying to beat, uh... Or you'll try beating 9.0 when, if they make a new Kid Icarus game? Yo. That's anything like, uh, Smash. I'm sure it's gonna be pretty difficult. I know they borrow a lot of the same concepts. It's the same- literally the same designer, it makes sense. Did I catch the Paris? I caught the Paris, right? I'm skipping this one. I must have caught the Paris. I've just been so invested into the conversation, I haven't really been thinking about anything. Yeah, Paris is right there, all good. <laughs> Rest in peace, Gohan's potential? Yeah. Only Gohan was more like his dad. I mean, because, like, we have Goten, right? Goten's more like his dad, but... Like, Goten... When he gets older, at least, what little I saw of him in GT, I didn't really think he was super interesting there. Cause yeah, he's not really as much like his dad at that point. Like, that was supposed to be his character. He's supposed to be, you know, he's Goku too. Cause he's like, now nah, that Gohan, you know, we messed up, let's try this again. <laughs> but nah, Goten, he, he becomes someone else when he's a teenager. He doesn't join in the GT adventures. At least from what I've seen. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yo, we need a Ice Climbers reboot game too? They have potential? Yo, I would- Ah, oh, I'm confused on Zuba. Come on, just hit him. Thank you. Finally. I'm so tired of losing like 40-50 seconds to one Zuba. So annoying. So annoying. 
Yeah, I never played the original Ice Climbers, so I don't really have any interest in a new Ice Climbers game. Like, I mean, any game that's like a co-op adventure, I'll play that. I don't know if that's what Ice Climbers is, but it, a co-op adventure game? Please. I love co-op adventure. One plays a part in GT, although not a large one. Yeah, I, I know nothing, man. Yeah, I remember GT being Goku, Trunks, and Pan. And if I remember right, it's still mostly Goku. So the three of them go on that adventure. Which I thought was really cool, man. It's like, oh, Trunks, you're back! I mean, you're not back. <laughs> you're the baby Trunks, and you've just grown up, but... I don't know, man. It's interesting. Yeah, seeing Vegeta and all of them in GT after that time skip is just really, really funny. But yeah, Vegeta has the mustache in GT, doesn't he? I always thought that looked funny. Alright, only 33 seconds behind on Mount Moon. That's not bad, dude. That is not bad. At all. This is, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. I could get a pretty large PB off of this, man. Pretty big. I forgot how good my PB Mount Moon was and like everything because it's like it feels bad because I lost all that time on Nidoran but it's like <laughs> look at that I'm only 33 seconds behind dude. Beautiful. Nobody says the original Ice Climbers game was pretty basic stuff but still fun and difficult at times. See them doing a co-op mountain climb cavern crawl type game. Yeah, I don't know how they would execute that. Like, as long as it's co-op, I'll play it. <laughs> like, I have literally no attachment to Ice Climbers. I never played their game. But, there's a new game. Looks like a fun co-op adventure. I'm down. I'll kidnap my uh, sister, Cinnamon, and we will play the video game. It'll be great. Or the trashiest splits in my PB? The trashiest split in my PB, if I remember correctly. Like, I'm not sure if it was a different PB, but yeah, the trashiest time was Dark Tunnel, because I took an optional fight in there. So bad. Yeah, I just gotta not do that again. Yeah, I can't get excited yet, dude. I have two Pidgeotos I have to get past, and <laughs> this being the first one. Oh, dude, don't say and attack me. Don't do it, don't do it. Ugh. Okay, okay, that's turn one. Ooh, turn two. Please, don't do it. Oh, he failed! He failed the say and attack. Let's go! Let's go, dude. Yes! Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! Nice try, Pidgeotto. Nice try. Oh, man. Yo, I lucked out, dude. I lucked out. He used sand attack and failed to activate it. Nice. Yo. Maybe a run today? Maybe a run? I would like to be on a run. I mean, it's too soon. It's too soon to say. I gotta get past Lieutenant Surge first. Only then will we really know. Alright, I got 24 HP. Do y'all want the plot of Kid Icarus Uprising 2 to be? Well, I never played the first one. So, for me, I want the plot to be, um, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe it could just be Pit talking about like, hey, I'm Pit, I existed in Smash Brothers, and I wasn't the most interesting character there. I have a very boring playstyle, <laughs> IMO, but hey, now that I'm in my own game, clearly I'll try to do some more unique stuff. Yo, man. I hate on Pit so hard in, like, Smash 4. I really don't like his playstyle. It's like... He's not, like, top tier or anything, so I don't have any complaints where he's like, Oh, Pit's too good. Because he's not. Like, he's a good character. Like, that's the thing, right? Like, he's just... 
just so average. Just so incredibly average, like... I mean, slightly above, like, slightly above average. But, like, he's not as good as Mario, right? Like, Mario is the character you think of when you think well-rounded character. Like, even Mario has, like, some cool stuff he can do. It doesn't have that. Like, his, like, coolest thing is he can gimp people with his Aegis Reflector. And even that is pretty gimmicky. Yeah, no. He just has good range. He can juggle decently. Oh, wow. Up into the quick attack. Rip! How did I lose that fight? <laughs> I don't understand. Did I genuinely miss? Oh, no, I did horn attack. I just didn't knock him out. Normally, I do. But, well, who needs a run when you cannot have a run? That's fine. Because I was like, I shouldn't die here. <laughs> I don't understand. Why, why am I dead? You know, I died because I didn't get the full hit on Thrash. Or not Thrash, Horn Attack. Just bad luck. And then yeah, he would Hyper Fang. And then do a Quick Attack on the next turn. I mean, it would have been optimal if he didn't Quick Attack. I would have had the red bar for the rest of the bridge. I still would have lost time, even though it was a good rival fight. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty terrible. Pretty terrible. But it's like, it's whatever, man. I wasn't on, like, super good pace or anything. Like, it was, like, my first time being on, like, decent pace. On decent pace. You know, be saying, um, it'd be fun to see pro Smash players try and win through only the random character selection. <laughs> I mean, they could do it, man. Like, a lot of pro Smash players can play a lot of characters. Like, for example, like, just myself, like, I wouldn't consider myself pro. Like, I consider people that are pro are people that have won, like, regional tournaments. Which, I've placed high in regional tournaments, I've placed like top three multiple times, but I've never taken first place in a regional. Unless you count like PAX Australia, which was like a hundred man tournament, but I wouldn't count that one. That was way too early in Smash 4's life. People were still figuring out the game. But um... Yeah, no, like a lot of top level players of the game can play a plethora of characters, like at a pretty decent level. And even the characters they can't play, they still know what they're supposed to do. Like, yeah, I've never played Marth before, but... Like, I can fair. I can forward tilt. It's not that hard. Like, they're not gonna be pulling off any crazy swag combos, but... Pulling off a win won't be too difficult. Obviously, the person that wins a tournament would just be the person that's lucky enough to land on enough characters that they do well with. When I didn't use Mac, I would use Donkey Kong, Villager, and Toon Link. Yep. Enjoyed all those characters, man. Like, DK was definitely, like, my solid secondary. I enjoyed Donkey Kong a lot. Like, Ryu was a character I'd throw out when he came out. Like, I don't know. Every, like, once in a blue moon. I didn't really use Ryu too much. I just didn't practice him enough to, like, really be consistent with him. But, like, if I really didn't want to fight a, like, Sheik, like, I really don't like Sheik. And I was like, maybe I can, like, <laughs> YOLO my way through this fight. Because, like, true sure you can, you can beat Sheik at 60%, like, take the sock. So that was always fun. And Villager just has some absolutely free matchups against certain characters. Yeah, it's just a slow Bulbasaur fight, forget that one. Yeah, I did play Toon Link a bit here and there. Like, when I was playing on stream, I mostly just played Little Mac, and then when I wasn't playing Little Mac, I played Donkey Kong. It was pretty rare that I played Villager. Like, I don't think my Villager's that good. I just think Villager has certain matchups that are just free. Like, it's like, Villager can't lose this matchup, so I'll play Villager. And then, like, if Little Mac has a really, really bad matchup, and then Donkey Kong also has a really, really bad matchup, 
and like I just tried everything I can with Little Mac, then maybe I'll go Villager. But yeah, usually I won't. Usually I'll only play Little Mac or DK. I ran Little Mac into your Sonic? Yeah, I, I wasn't really worried about your Sonic. Like, most of the time, I'll go into a bad matchup with Little Mac, because he's my best character. He's my best character. It's like, Rosalina? Little Mac. Sonic the Hedgehog? Little Mac. Sheik? Little Mac. Like, it doesn't matter how bad the matchup is. Most of the time, I'll just do my best character. Because, like, again, like, there's matchups, but it really depends on the player's individual level, right? Because, like, I can have a bad matchup against, like, say, Mega Man, for example. Doomsday used Mega Man. Mega Man wins that matchup, but Doomsday's not as good as I am, so I'll just use Little Mac and I'll beat him anyways, because he's just my best character. Oh, Diddy? I did use Diddy for a little bit. <laughs> Super Sense Slayer saying, I remember Daz Boot saying during one video, there's a solution to all your problems, Finks. His name is Diddy Kong. Yeah, no, I played Diddy Kong for literally one tournament. There was one tournament where, like, I had, like, recently bopped Pape and or Pape. How do you say his name? Yeah, it is Pape, right? Yeah, I would bopped him in something. And, like, I don't know. He was upset about, like, how high my results were at the time. And he was saying how easy it is to, like, do well with Little Mac. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you go Little Mac all tournament. I'll go Diddy Kong all tournament. Let's see how that goes. I know I won't be seeing you in finals. You won't make it. Yeah, no, it's a bad fight. And so, yeah, he went Little Mac. I think he played, like, two games with Little Mac. Maybe two. And, yeah, he very quickly switched back to Sheik. Me, on the other hand, I played Diddy all the way in the top eight. I think I hit top five with Diddy. Which was a character I'd never played at the time. I'd never played Diddy Kong, but I wanted to prove how easy he was. It was easy. It was really easy. Who was that boring dude I was talking about yesterday? Oh, that's the buzz. Like, there's certain characters that, in my opinion, or not characters, certain players that, in my opinion, have really uninteresting play styles. Like, essentially, if they're really campy, if they play really safe, but they just kind of use attacks and they don't engage, we're like, essentially, like, they, they'll be outplaying you. Like, they're definitely outplaying you. I'm not saying that they're not good. Like, having a campy playstyle, in my opinion, is the optimal way to play Smash Brothers. But it's just uninteresting. I don't like playing against it, it's really boring, I don't like watching it, it's very boring. So yeah. Like, again, the Buzz, One of the best players in the world, for sure. He's also just really boring to watch. <laughs> I don't enjoy watching his games. You know, those two days when Senpai tried maining Rob? Yeah, no, nah, man. I mean, she wasn't even maining him, it was just her secondary. She just wanted to learn the character. Diddy Kong is a problem too, and cause of many problems, yo. He, he's been nerfed a few times, so it's not as bad as it used to be. But he was, like, dumb. But yeah, it's, it's good to have a secondary character. You don't want to not have a secondary character for Smash. I mean, like, obviously, I probably shouldn't say that too loudly. It's more important that you're good with one character. I know way too many people that even at, like, a high level of play, like, not top, but high level of play, will be like, oh yeah, you know, Palatina loses this matchup, I need to switch characters, and it's like, no, you, you don't need to do that. You just need to outplay your opponent. You don't need to switch to a character that you're not as good at and then get bopped because you're not as good with that character. That's such an easy way to lose sets. It's not worth it. Like, if you're gonna have a secondary, it's a character you have to have invested time into. There's way too many people that'll, like, they'll lose that first game of the set, they get really anxious about it, and then they swap characters. They usually go on to lose the set. <laughs> usually a lot easier than before. Like, it depends on the level of play, right? Is that really low levels of play, just switching that character can make the difference. Like, sometimes at that low level of play, like, you know, they're like, oh, you know, I win this matchup, like, 
little mech, for example, this little mech, so easy. They're like, yeah, let me go Samus. They will know what to do against Samus. <laughs> it's like, how much time do you actually have in Samus? Like, yes, the matchup is better. Because you're playing a character with projectiles versus Little Mac, who was just using, you know, his fists. But, like, what are you gonna do with that? People just don't get it, man. They just don't get it. Which, I mean, it makes sense, you know? Like, for me, like... I'm like, duh, it's so obvious, but, you know, I've, I've been playing in fighting games since I was, like, 18. I have, like, 10 years of experience in fighting games. So there's a lot of, like, mechanics and fundamentals that I just understand. Versus a lot of other people that play the game in a much more casual sense. Even, like, there's people that are like, yeah, I'm a competitive player, and like, no. You, you put in probably about, like, 20 hours a week that you could could even be considered competitive. You're, you're not really a competitive player. You gotta put in way more time to be really considered competitive. You don't take the game seriously enough. And like, for those players, you know, these casual players, they're, they're not gonna know these things. Just not gonna happen. They don't have the time put in. They don't have the experience. They don't have the resources. I mean, the resources are out there. But they just don't know they exist. They're ignorant to them. Is what it is, man. But yeah, hopefully Smash 5 turns out to be a good game, man. The Super Smash Brothers for Switch is a good game. I'll definitely be playing it myself. I will try to create as many resources as I can. Like, that'll be my main focus in Smash Switch, if that comes out. Is trying to help people get good at the game. Like, people just don't understand. They don't understand really simple concepts. Man, there are people that will spend more time trying to learn how to do advanced techniques like Bado or, um... I don't know, just... What's it called? Like, a reverse aerial raid? I, I don't remember what they call it. But yeah, there's all these, like, little techniques people will try to learn before they learn how to recover properly. <laughs> and it's like, dude, you have to recover. <laughs> like, you have to get onto the stage. You should spend more time recovering on the stage than you should mastering, like, a technique that helps you move around the stage a teensy bit better. Recovering on the stage is 100% more useful. Ah. This is our Inklings replacing one of the DLC fighters. I mean, we honestly have no idea about the game at all. We literally know nothing. Like, there's no information out there. Um, my guess is there's there's gonna be a lot of characters dropped, I think. I think a lot of characters are gonna fall off. Not just the DLC characters, but um, like Brawl characters. Maybe a couple of the melee ones. And yeah, definitely a couple of the Smash 4 ones as well. Like, not everybody's coming back. Yeah, if people think there's gonna be like 64 characters in Smash for Switch, they're just... They have really high hopes, but I just can't match. I can't imagine them making that many characters in such short a span of time. Should I just reset? Yeah, I should just reset. This is really bad. Yo, can't wait for the Invitational? Yo, man, E3, show me the Smash 4. I need to see what's going on. Yo, give me uh, two seconds. I'll be right back. <laughs> 